How long, Dale, does it take you to win that respect of some of these guys who, who go back, in some cases, before the NFL-AFL merger? Definitely, definitely. There's a lot of older guys around. I think you really just try to do it day after day. When you go into a school, try to get there early, try to be precise and accurate with your information. When you go to a pro day, helping out with everything, helping out with the height, the weight, the 40. You just want to do as much as you can and prove to them that you know what you're doing. So you, you know your place and so you're respectful, but you do it in a way that is as efficient and as accurate as possible. Exactly. All right, so John, can you name the first time you had to stand up for a player in a room as a young guy who worked his way and who talked his way into an opportunity? Do you remember the first time that you had to, as, as people like to say, you had to stand on the table for somebody and, and argue with some older guys? Oh, sure. And how hard was that as a young guy? Well. It was, it was difficult, but I understood that that's the job I signed up for. I was very, very fortunate to come into a room uh, when I became a scout filled with nothing but veteran scouts. I'm talking about C. Obercato, Cole Proctor, Phil Neary, who's still with us. These guys, I, I mean, they've seen, they forget more football than, than I'll ever know. So it was a tough room, and, and I think uh, you had to have thick skin. and. It, we're all very respectful in this business, and I think that if you can present your case in a, in a respectful manner to where they know you've done the work, then they'll take some criticism, and, and, and they respect that. It's, it's kind of the younger guys that are a little bit brash and, and don't, don't back up what they're saying with good quality information and, and a strong work ethic. Those are, the, those are the ones that get picked on a little bit by, by the older crowd, and, and for good reason. Anybody ever say to you, you don't know what you're doing? I don't oh, sure. look, look young guy. Yeah, I mean, yesterday. You, yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, but I'm talking about when you, when you first got started. But I mean, this is confidence. I, I think for a lot of us from the outside, as we see players on TV watching games on Saturday, we think, oh, we want that guy. Right. But we don't, we've not seen the medical. We don't know what his off the field issues might be. We don't know if he fits in the scheme properly. I mean, if you put somebody on the line that they have to put their neck Oh, on yeah. the chopping block to say this is a Titan or this is not a Titan. I mean, where does right. that confidence come from? Well, it, it comes from your work. I mean, we spend countless months, weeks, days at these schools. The process lasts over a year. Uh, like I said, we're about to start looking at 2018 guys. So if you know that you've done the work on these players, if you know that you've talked to everybody in that organization, you know that you've watched so much, you might have watched 10, 12, 14 games over the course of a couple of years on a guy, well, that builds confidence. And, and when I am that confident that I've done that much work on a player, then I've got absolutely no problem putting my neck on the line for that yeah, guy. But golly, I mean, maybe between Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota, you know, that, but to pick between two third-day linebackers, you know, who may go in the fifth round, this guy or this guy, what, what decides it for you, Dale? You know what, it could be the intangibles. If uh, physical tools are the same, it's really the intangibles. Like John said, speaking to everyone at the school, the coaches, the training staff, the academic advisor, when they love those guys just as people, their intelligence, their work ethic, that puts those guys over the top, and those are the kind of guys we want on this team. But what about when you really like the guy? You just, you just can't help it. You just, yeah, this has happened before I take it, huh? Yeah, I think, I think it happens all the time. You, you find up. one every year or yeah. two every year that yeah. you just, oh, coach, we just love this guy. And they're like, yep. but he's only 5'7". Yeah. I mean, sometimes you look at a guy and you see the tape and something may be missing. He may not be, like you said, tall enough, big enough, fast enough. But you get all this background information on the guy and he's just, he's a great human being. He's somebody you want in the locker room. And that's to me where it gets tough. I have to take a step back and go, but can he help us on the football right. field? And that's, I think that's what it boils down to is, are all the pieces there. Is he a good person that, that also happens to be a good football player?